It's 11.59 and 55 seconds. Turn on your headlights. It's time for Night Drive. Good evening and welcome to Night Drive. I'm your host, Horace Wexler. It's late and I am doing great in this little slice of paradise. I certainly hope you are too, whether... Whether you're pushing your humble janitor's cart through an empty workplace, doing a little tidying up while the drones have left the hive, getting down to some funky jams coming through your Walkman, or or maybe you're out there in the sprawl of that black ocean, hauling lines of glow sticks up from the murky depths laden with delicious juicy seafood that'll grace the plates of hungry diners tomorrow when they order catch of the day. Well, wherever you are, whoever you are, thanks for listening, and hey, did you hear about the bit of kerfuffle down on William Bryden Avenue this evening? It was just off the main drag through town. Um, if you're one of those who sit next to the police scanner, you might have gleaned some of the details. But um, if not, we'll do our best to, to catch you up with what we currently know. Uh, to keep it very brief, uh, a shirtless elderly man, heavily intoxicated, and uh, I think it's safe to say it, at least mildly handicapped, uh, because he was astride a fully powered Zipar Roo personal scooter, This man sped down Bryden Avenue, smashing several cars and and clipped a woman before police were finally able to bring the driver to a stop. So uh, a bit of a chase. Uh, It's not totally clear what happened after the scooter was stopped, but uh, the word is the battery on the scooter exploded. Uh, The driver, Royston Bongdoner, has already threatened to sue. Uh, Did you see this go down? Did, uh, Did he almost hit you? Do you think our police are doing enough to, to combat the rising tide of drunken scooting on land? I mean, we're not talking about being on a boat here. Uh, you have to maintain a .08 to keep your Florida boater's license. No, we're talking about the land, the place that we walk, the place that we live, the, the place where we throw all our trash. We need to keep our land safe so that we could be safe on it. What you want to do on your boat, get as drunk as you want. That's totally fine. Absolutely safe. Nine out of ten doctors agree that you should be as drunk as possible on a boat. But on land, you got to reel it in. you got to rein it in. I'm sure you've got a lot of thoughts racing through your head right now. Well, get them across the finish line. Call me up and share your opinions. It's what I, Horace Wexler, hunger for. That number is 305-209-9686. You're listening to Night Drive. We'll get right into your calls and opinions on how to deal with this menace. But uh, but first, hey, uh, you ever thought about uh, how much more delicious and robust freshly ground coffee might be? Uh, well, let me know if you want one of uh, 150 coffee grinders I'm holding on to for a friend. Uh, they've, they've disappeared and um, I can't seem to find them now. I think I might have gotten scammed, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not... Totally sure how is as they seem to be of generally excellent quality. Um, you know, in in fact, let, let's say I only have 149 because I, I really should keep one of these things. Uh, they, they seem top tier. Uh, they don't have any drugs hidden inside or anything. As as far as I can tell, it's it's just a high quality steel grinder with uh, with adjustable diamond precision blades to to really churn those beans. Uh, and I and I've got a whole pallet of them, so you can pretty much name your price. You know, the price will be so good, you'd think I was drunk, like the cops will have to pull me over. Um, but actually, no, no, um, no, no cops. Let's just let's just keep this between us, between between friends. Uh, go ahead and drop my producer a line uh, if you're interested in, in one of those 149 coffee grinders. Uh, but let's get over to your calls again. We're talking about the DUI on William Bryden Avenue. Call in and share at 305-209-9686. Uh, we're going to kick off tonight with a caller from line four. Go ahead, caller. You're live on night drive. Hi, Horace. My name is Justin. Hey, Justin. Thanks for calling in. Uh, what do you think about this shirtless man scooting under the influence? My God. All these people driving around topless, pantsless, topless and pantless, no shoes after they have their cells, some of that fine, fine alcohol. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just the greatest thing in the world. Wow, that's that's not where I thought you were going with this, Justin. I love it. I love seeing people having fun. Fun, yeah, right. I enjoy the carnage. I mean, who doesn't love a demolition derby? Okay. We had that thing with those school buses that time, and I still believe that is the best decision we ever made. 
Well, you swayed me with the derby, but then you lost me with the school buses, Justin. But uh, thanks for calling in. Thanks, Horace. Bye. All right. Uh, let's take another caller. We'll uh, let's go over here to line three. Line three. Go ahead, line three. Hi, Horace. How are you? This is Brenda Chartreuse. Hi, Brenda. How are you this evening? I'm good. Thank you for asking. So we're talking about the uh, the DUI that happened on uh, William uh, Bryden Avenue. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, well, I think about it. I think I was a uh, part of the DUI. Okay. Oh, really? Yes, I was. Yes, I was one of the people who got hit by Mr. Bong Donner. Oh wow! I mean, we're trying to piece uh, piece together what happened from from some of the um, the police scanner action. Horace, let me give you the pieces. Okay, okay. So I'm walking down the street, right? You know, I got my shopping bags in each hand, and I see, <coughs> and I see this guy coming at me on this little scooter. Okay, he didn't have a shirt on. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? what is this guy's shirt? And he he like you know he looked drunk, but he he smelled way more drunk. You know, from that far away, I could smell it. And I was like, look at this little rascal. And I was not talking about the scooter, okay? <laughs> and he just coming straight at me. And he is bouncing off Honda Civics like a pinball machine. And we lost a lot of good Civics that day. And I was looking at him like, there's no way he's going to hit me. There's no way he's going to hit me. Oh, my gosh. This man is going to hit me. And, of course, he ran over my foot. Oh, my gosh. Those are heavy. I mean, I was fine. But still, it was very I mean, this is not the first time I have been hit by an old person on a scooter. I'm, and it's getting to be a problem because I can't even go in a Costco anymore. I just can't. There's too much trauma. Could you tell if... Uh, it's if, triggering, Horace. <laughs> it's triggering. Could you tell if Mr. Bong Donor was, was able to see you? Did he, he make any attempt to swerve or, or change his, his rate of direction? Well, I don't know. Cause his hands were up above his head and he just kept on yelling, he just kept on saying his own name so he was looking up while the scooter was going forward and i was trying to get his his, his you know attention i was trying to be like hi mm-hmm. hi but he kept on going and you know then he ran over my foot are you, are you gonna have to receive any sort of medical attention for your foot or well, I had a real handsome doctor look at it for about 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wish I got some more attention from him, but he said that wouldn't be professional. Right, right. Uh, was the doctor married? Yes, oh, they're okay. always married. Well, you, you doesn't they're sound like you had much of a married. shot there, uh, Miss Chartreuse. Yeah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> lot, not a lot of people in our town have scruples. <laughs> the, the heartbreaker. Uh, do you have any idea where uh, where Mr. Bong Toner I came from? Like the direction he was traveling from. Uh, I, I know this is a little speculative. I, I, I didn't. I did. I don't know where exactly he came from. I mean, I know he turned a corner somewhere. I wish I could be more of help, but you know, I was just carrying my shopping, walking, enjoying the nice weather, and then all of a sudden, bong donor just comes down the road on a warpath. I mean, it was like he just wanted to take out as many civics as possible. Huh. Were you around when the uh, the sheriffs finally brought him to a stop, or or did you miss that? I, no, no, I did see the sheriffs. They they uh, they showed on up, and you know they they pulled out the guns, and they're like, "Stop the scooter!" And then they kind of did this whole crazy police thing to actually bring the scooter to a halt. Mm-hmm. And then um, Bong, Bong Donor, he like fell out like a like a sack of potatoes, like a sack of like very fat potatoes. And then, you know, something happened. I don't know what, but all of a sudden, the scooter exploded. Right. And you know what, Horace? Let me tell you, it was underwhelming. Like, right, I mean, it's uh, yeah, a small I thought, battery. I thought it'd be more, yeah, I thought it'd be a lot more exciting, but it was just a real piddly little explosion. You know, kind of like a, and you're like, oh, that's it? Oh, okay. Oh, that's uh, crazy. On the police radio, it, it definitely sounded... Uh, like it, it was much larger, uh, in, in how they were talking about it. I don't, I don't know whether to be oh, disappointed well, you know the or police, they're always, they're always juicing it up to make it sound more crazy than it was. No, I was <laughs> there. It was just like a, a little campfire that, you know, you know, you could have went over and peed on it if you wanted to put it out, but I don't know why you do that. That'd be crazy. Uh, did you exchange any words with Mr. Bongdoner, uh, after he hit you? Did he hang around the scene or did he just like, Kind of keep on trucking, uh, to use a metaphor. Uh, I was, I was like, "Hey, you, you fat piece of crap! 
you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I called him an SOB, and I, I shoved my foot in his face, and I said, look at what you did to my foot. And he was so drunk, he didn't even care. I mean, he was he was all, he was checked into Margaritaville and just wasted away there. <laughs> Uh, well, well, thank you so much for, uh, for calling in. Is there anything, uh, else that you'd like to let us know about the incident that, um, we who were just sort of listening in may not be aware of? Uh, you know, I just say, I think the most important thing to remember is my left foot. It's kind of sore. You're probably going to see me limping around town. So if you have the, the, the ache in today, I don't want to give that lady a little foot rub. Well, let me just tell you, it's okay. Come on up and rub my feet. I think that'd be nice. <laughs> Uh, well, that actually leads me to a different question. Are you going to pursue any sort of legal action uh, against Mr. Bong Donor? I mean, you know, what am I going to what am I going to get out of that man? Get what? Get his, his broken scooter? You know, I mean, you you can't get blood from a stone, and you can't get money from a bong donor. I mean, everybody knows that saying, and it's a saying because it's true. Yep, Brenda, uh, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, I do hope your foot feels better. And, uh, you know, I also hope somebody takes you up on that foot rub offer. Yeah, and I hope that, you know, foot rub graduates to sucking toes. We'll see. Oh, you're on the prowl. (laughs) Mm, It's a hunt, Horace. I'm going to get some. (laughs) Is there there anything else that you'd you'd like to share with with us or our listeners uh, before we let you go tonight? You know, I think it's just a little weird that 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 general man mm-hmm. he shut down the shonies yeah you know and I, I i just did not to me that's that sounds a little scary and i just don't understand why he did that right uh, did you ever go to that shonies before they shut it down oh everybody's been gone to that shonies that's the best shonies in town yeah it's the only one it's it's been really really disappointing uh, and as as far as i could tell there's There's no reason. I mean, it always seemed uh, about the normal level of cleanliness for a Shoney's like and he didn't seem like he was from the health department either. Where you gonna go when you want to have fun? Shoney's, Shoney's, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody's had it birthday parties and anniversaries and, and wedding receptions and funeral parties you know it's shonies it's shonies oh i miss their brunch so much yeah i miss their crackling breadsticks Ooh, i i had forgotten about how they crackle i keep looking online for uh for some sort of copycat recipe but uh they just can't seem to capture that that cracking sound that they have uh when they sit in the yeah. basket they crack so hard that one time I broke a tooth on it, and that's how you know it was a good one. <laughs> that's why a lot of people in our town don't have teeth. Well, yeah. That in the scud. <laughs> the cra- <laughs> crackling bread baskets in a glass of scud. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. I want to hear more of your opinions uh, coming up right after this. Call me up at 305-209-9686. You're listening to Night Drive. Hulu, Disney Plus, Prime Video, Apple TV Plus, Ritbox, Peacock, CBS All Access, DC Universe, Netflix. YouTube TV. There's a lot of streaming out there. But how much of it has got you screaming with the pulse pounding crunch of metal being sheared, smashed, and totaled by a gas powered hunk of Detroit steel? With Demolition Derby Plus, you'll feel like you're in the driver's seat. And with a free month, you'll see every hit, every smash, every crash, flip, fender bender, and near miss. And with new hit shows like Can I Crash Here, hosted by Steve-O, and Procrastinator with Jay Leno, you'll be in on all the action. Start your free month now by going to www.demolitionderbyplus.xyz. All right, welcome back to Night Drive. Uh, let's get right back to more of your calls uh, right now. Let's go over here to line two. Line two, go ahead. Hey there, Horace. How are you? 
I'm good. I'm good. Who is this? Oh, it's Sheriff, Sheriff Nichols. Ah, Sheriff Bud Nichols, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> How are you this evening? Hey, you know, I, I'm not too bad. What we're dealing with uh, recently is, you know, it, it almost feels kind of quaint compared yeah. to... Uh, compared to what's been going on here in town. So well, it, it, it you know, sounded it, it, like... It's uh, stressful. It's, yeah, yeah, stressful. It, coming through the police scanner, it, it sounded action-packed. Uh, I know it's it's probably not as big in uh, real life as it sounded, but um, uh, maybe you can shine some more light on this for us. Oh, well, uh, you know, I'm I, I'm not sure what all you know, what all has gotten out through uh, local news media, but uh, I think most people know by now that there, there was an incident down on, on Bryden Avenue Mm-hmm. We have, uh, you know, we, there's all these, uh, you know, we, we've started calling them uh, boomer brew halls. Right. Uh, these, these bars where, uh, you know, the, the older residents like to hang out. And the problem we've had recently is there seems to be a lot of over serving going on. Mm-hmm. We're used to having to take calls in, in the general vicinity. But uh, this one got a little bit out of hand. There, there was a call that a gentleman was driving a uh, one of those uh, you know the Zipperoo right Zipperoo right scooter. like uh, like a rascal scooter um like a, yeah, a yeah, riding yeah. Kind of, like you yeah. would sit on it yeah this one's like a it's kind of, I guess a kind of off brand rascal the Zipperoo mm-hmm. and uh, you know this this gentleman uh, his name is Royston Bong Donor he was you know he he had a few and he was uh, he sideswiped several uh, parked cars uh, right. You know, and it, it got a little, uh, you know, it, it wasn't pretty. I, I think he uh, he hit a woman mm-hmm. and then uh, and ran over, ran over her foot. And uh, don't worry, she's she's OK. Good. But, uh, you know, so we but we did have to go down there. You know, it, it's not fun. It's, it's nothing anybody wants to deal with. But um, this is a, a completely uncommon occurrence down there. Mm hmm. Deputy Tucker uh, got the call. I think that's where the problem really started. Uh, no offense to Deputy Tucker. He's a good man, good officer. He's just, I, I think I've mentioned him before on your program. He's our deputy with the least amount of, of law enforcement experience. So, you know, he gets uh, he gets a little jittery. But, mm-hmm. you know, he was the closest guy to the call. And, you know, we heard that people might be injured. So he had to go down there. They they were able to do the pit maneuver on the zipper right? Yeah, because so there was a little bit of a chase, right? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, a, a low speed chase, but you don't want to go too hard. I mean, we <laughs> you're not going to overdo it. Of course, you see the dash cam footage; it's it's actually kind of fun, you know. Yeah, you know, you're you're not real worried anyone's going to get hurt too bad, but there's still some suspense, you know. It's uh I'll send you a little link. Uh, but uh, please do. They they did they did the pit maneuver. Deputy Tucker got out, confronted Mr. Bongoner, and uh, you know, as I said before, Deputy Tucker can get a little jittery. I I know this was not his intention. I know this had to just be nerves, but he kept slipping up. He kept calling him Mr. Dongboner, and uh, you know, of course. Mr. Bongoder uh, thought he was making fun of him. Right. Uh, things escalated from there, unfortunately. At that point, Mr. Bongoder reached for his basket of the zipper and scooter and started to pull out what Deputy Tucker uh, unfortunately perceived might be a weapon. What did he and think it was, uh, if I may uh, interject real quick? Well, he was he was afraid it might be a gun. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, because he's reaching into this basket, and there could be anything know, in there. Both of these gentlemen are already agitated. It, it wasn't a gun. It turned out to be a, a jitterbug phone. That's the cell phone with the right, the one with the the big numbers. Buttons on, yeah, yeah, big buttons on it for the older folks. And uh, so it was uh, wasn't a weapon. It was just a jitterbug phone. But uh, no pun, <laughs> Deputy Tucker. Uh, was a little jittery, and uh, unfortunately, his weapon was discharged. The bullet struck the battery of the Zipperoo scooter, and uh, this, uh, it, it resulted in a small explosion. Right, right. I mean, this is uh, this is far from the first occurrence. I mean, this this might be the biggest example of this so far. Um, but this is this is not an yeah, it's isolated a real, it's a real case. Wake up call. 
Yeah. Are, are you doing anything as, as sheriff to curb this kind of behavior? Well, you know, that whole that whole stretch of Bryden Avenue is, is getting real bad with this kind of stuff. But, you know, and we're we're encouraging uh, local business owners and uh, bar staff to, you know, to, to be a little more careful. But, uh, you know, like in, in this case, Horace, you know, Mr. Bond owner, he's a, a veteran of the Vietnam War. So right. I, I totally understand as a bartender not wanting to look this man in the eye and say, you know, hey, hey, thank you for your service, Mr. Mm-hmm. Bong Donor, but I, I think you've had enough. Right. I, I wouldn't want to do that either. So uh, all, all we can do is, uh, you know, kind of encourage uh, responsible drinking, moderation. I mean, hey, thank God he was just on the zipper and not not in his car. Absolutely. Uh, that That's terrifying. Uh, I mean, same slow speeds, but uh, right. it, it, obviously, like two extra tons of of material moving down the road. I, I know Deputy Junker did not mean uh, for any of this to happen, but you know, he he does have to be disciplined in some way. So, what what I've been uh, considering is sending him down there to stay. You know, maybe maybe just Thursday, Friday, Saturday, to, and uh, just kind of patrol. Maybe uh, maybe make some traffic stops to. Uh, God willing, stop some of these kinds of incidents before they happen. Are you doing anything with these these boomer brew halls, or are you just relying on them to sort of regulate themselves? Well, uh, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that we can do as far as uh, as enforcement on our end, unless we can catch them in the act of overserving these seniors. I, I don't know how much I really want to say on the air, but. Uh, you know, we we might look into into putting officers in um, you know kind of undercover disguises, right? Like in uh, order to like we put Deputy Tucker in like a white wig, send him down there. Yeah, put a, put him in a wig. You know, give him a little a, a cane or something, and, some golf pants. You know, because nobody wants to do this job, but uh, you know, he he's part of the reason we're in this mess. Right. You know, so he might as well be the one to do it. Big square glasses and a candle yeah, hat. Yeah, that, he, <laughs> Yeah, he looks pretty funny in that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I we'd get a laugh, like and uh, he might catch some bad guys, right? Yeah, perfect. Everybody wins, and the streets are a little bit safer. Uh, is so, uh, Sheriff. I I heard uh, a rumor, and I I don't know if this is accurate or not, which is why I I have to ask uh, you specifically um, before I pass this on in any sort of way over the radio. Uh, I heard that Mister Bong Donor had some tattoos that might link him to the Eighth Street Dust Kings. Is that accurate? Well, uh, I mean, I'm uh, I'm getting pretty used to this at this point. That uh, you know, information that didn't necessarily need to be out there in the public is. But uh, you know, since it's already out there, I, I may as well address it. It's Gator whispers, Sheriff. You know, it gets out there. I'm starting to realize there's nothing I can do about it. It's part of our job, you know, as law enforcement officers, to know the the signs, the things to recognize. Uh, whether they are uh, suspected of a crime already or not, mm-hmm. know whether that individual may be affiliated with a gang. So we did. We saw uh, a, a few tattoos on Mr. Bond Donor that led us to believe he, he might be a member of the Eighth Street uh, Dust Kings. The first one, this one was uh, we noticed he had a, a tattoo of a Shriners cap. You know the Fez. You know, yeah, the yeah, a Fez. Cap. But, you know, they got the tassel on them. This one, the tassel was barbed wire. Oh. That's a little bit of a red flag for us. Yeah. You know, and he had another one that was um, it was a, a Werther's original mm-hmm. candy with a skull and crossbones on it. We saw that and we thought, hey, this guy, okay, it's looking more and more like he, he might be in that uh, in that gang. But right. I'll tell you, the one that, uh, that really... Uh, set off alarm bells for us and kind of kind of cinched it was the one that said uh eight street dust kings that was the one we saw where we thought okay there yeah there it is you know i i, I can't um I, I can't judge a man for how he spends his time technically it's uh it's just a social club yeah but, uh, we do have to keep an eye on these these types of organizations right right well um I, i'm certainly glad you're you're out there sheriff you know, there there was a lot of controversy about those. They go down there, they got their their boomer brawl nights, right. which uh, I, I know a lot of people it, it can kind of you know put a bad taste in your mouth to think about something like that. But you know, some of these guys 
that's a that's a way for them to uh, you know get their jollies out. You know, mm-hmm. blow off some steam down there. You know, a, a guy who fights another old guy in a cage. Maybe the next night he doesn't uh, have one too many and go cruising down down Brighton Avenue and his, uh, in his zipper. I had no idea that they were they were tied to the the Boomer Brawl outside um, Hank's old Arby's. Uh, I mean, that would definitely ex- explain some of the deaths that have happened. Yeah, I down mean, there. it's not. Uh, there's no. Yeah, there, there's no official affiliation, but uh, these these eight street dust king horse man, some of those old boys roll pretty deep, and yeah. you got you got enough of these guys, and they got a. I mean, th- these are these are men. These are uh, these are old timers, tough tough dudes who uh, still got a lot. They need to need to kind of get out, you know. And if they're down there doing their boomer brawls, yeah, they're fighting each other. That's all. That's all consensual. Nobody's getting punched there that didn't mm-hmm. agree to get into a fight. You tell these guys they can't have their boomer brawls, they go to the boomer boo halls instead. Now you got guys on zipper who's side swiping cars running over kids. Right. It's it's almost better to keep them uh, contained, uh, for lack of a better word. Yeah, let them punch it out, I say. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Sheriff, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, is there anything else you want to share with us before I let you go? This is a, as good a time as any to remind everyone that Keep an eye on maybe your parents, maybe your grandparents. Maybe maybe they do want to knock back a few. Have them do it at home. Have them do it at home where it's safe. Have them bring bring their friends over. Say, hey, grandpa, you know you want a drink? At least at least do it here. And no, and everybody leaves the keys to the scooters with me. Right. You know you're going to do it here where it's safe. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, Sheriff. Uh, Well, thanks so much for keeping our streets safe. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure, Horace. All right. (laughs) Thanks, Sheriff. Uh, I want to hear from you. 305-209-9686. Right after these messages. Dig it, baby. Dig it. That's me wailing on the saxophone in a song I like to call... Alley Cat. The saxophone gives it that sexy strut. It's the epitome of brass, man. And yet, it's a woodwind. The humble saxophone. Whoa, that's crazy. Hey, guy, I'm Leonard Patio Manchester, the emperor of sound. You might have heard my wild tones on my album Live at Blue Stones, a feel-good jazzterpiece that blasted my special blend of creamy jazz all over the audience. But I'm here today to tell you about a very special two-disc set, Sounds of the Saxophone. Most people know the saxophone can make some slick jams. I'm looking at you, Baker Street, while I'm high-fiving you, Careless Whisper. But real sax fiends know the saxophone is more than just music. It can also make terrific noise. Check out track eight. Oh, man, bodacious. That's the silkiest, creamiest honk, baby. Talking honks, how about some hot breath? That's disc two, track six. Or how about track 23 on disc one, The Power of Arabian Funk? Or how about this classic from disc two, Heavy Moaning Baby? And track 13, disc two, The Jazz Spurt. Or any of these other favorites. Sounds like boat. Got it right in the sacks. It's all noise and noise like only the saxophone can make. Anyone can listen to saxophone music, but only a true aficionados love sax noise. Sounds of the saxophone. Pick up the two disc set now at your local Sam Goody. Goodies got it. Uh, we're going to take another one of your calls right here, right now. Uh, go ahead, line line five. Go ahead. Hey, Horace, how you doing, buddy? This is Luis. 
Hey, Louise, good to hear from you. Man, look, I saw that report about that uh, that old feller on the rascal. Right. And man, I know I'm going to offend a lot of bleeding hearts out there, but I don't care. I'm going to speak my truth. You know what I mean, buddy? Let's speak away, guy. We're all about the truth here on Night Drive. Look, the boomer generation, their parents were the greatest generation, right? I mean, am I right? Of course you're right. They won World War II. But, well, by default, that makes them the second greatest generation. Uh-huh. I said let them do whatever they want. Who is he hurting? Well, I'm not sure I agree with you here, Luis. These scooties are clearly dangerous and, and getting worse. I mean, who even makes boots for scooters anyway, buddy? Well, look, currently, you're right. But if Fakahashi wanted to immobilize these scooters with a boot, maybe for repeat offenders, there's certain to be a market there for someone to step in and start manufacturing those. It's, it's basic capitalism. Could be a job creator. All right, man. I just said my piece. I got to go. I'll catch you on the air, buddy. Bye. All right. Always good to hear from you, Luis, even if I think you, you might be a little off the mark here. We're going to get right back to, to more of your calls. Uh, I see all the lights blinking. And all of you are waiting so patiently to, to share all of your opinions uh, on, on this uh, DUI that happened. Uh, but first, uh, I'm going to read a few community announcements to let you know what's going on in, in Fakahatchee this week. Uh, it seems like quite a bit. Um, you want to just... Do you love pickleball? Well, screw you, Bethany. Why don't you play a real sport? Y'all don't even use rackets. You use paddles. That makes you closer to kayaking than tennis, you traitor. The ball doesn't even look like a pickle. Get bent. We're glad we kicked you out of the tennis club. Your kid was stealing and Glenn was right to give him a chop across the face. So yeah, we're countersuing. Uh, you better lawyer up because we're about to serve up some justice. We'll see you in court, but not on the tennis court. Ha ha. Um, that, that's, a, uh, that's a little too personally focused uh, to be in included here. Um, People for Ghosts are doing their annual pancake breakfast to fund some of their programs, and they're still looking for volunteers to help them sling those flapjacks and hotcakes. If you've got a strong syrup arm and batter biceps, and you'd like to get all the pancakes you can eat while helping Fakahatchee's displaced poltergeists in the process, please reach out to Fanny McFattenbog or go to peopleforghosts.com. How's about an offer you can't say snows to? Look, I, I, I just read it like it's written. The Fakahatchee community players are mounting a performance of The Sopranos, Season 4, Episode 9, Whoever Did This. Puce Higgins stars as Tony in this brutal hour-long episode turned three-hour play when the level of Tony's violence shocks even him. You all said hair was hippie nonsense and didn't come, so we expect to see you in the seats. It's not TV. It's theater. Ghosts for People are doing their annual spaghetti dinner next Tuesday, so if you look into Rigatoni's Pasta Palace and see that the lights are flickering and plates and silverware are floating around, please leave the area immediately. Please leave the area immediately. All right, that's your Fakahatchee community announcements. Uh, let's get right back to more of your calls and opinions right now. Uh, let's go right over here to line, I don't know, line six. Why not? We never pick line six. Line 6, talk to me. Hello. Go ahead. This is Lieutenant General Albert Montauk. With whom am I speaking? You're live on Night Drive with me, Horace Wexler, right now, General. Did um did you have some thoughts on the DUI? The, the DUI? N no. No, I do not. Right. Uh, okay, then I can only assume you're calling about one of those bean grinders I mentioned at the top of the show, but uh, like I've told some other callers, I'd prefer to handle most of those details uh, off air. Bean if grinder? I, I'm not familiar with the, this slang. They grind coffee beans for drinking. Coffee is beans. Coffee is beans. Well, now I've heard all the lies from the media. Yes, I'll have some refried coffee or a three coffee salad for my decadent liberal picnic. Coffee is a fine powder. Yeah, they roast the beans and then they grind, they grind them up into that powder. It's bean powder. I'll have to check my intel on that. You have bean intel? You don't know what intel I have, Zivy. No, yeah, sure. Uh, we'll all we'll all wait while you read <laughs> silently on air. Okay. Uh, so uh, your story checks out, son. Coffee is beans. Apologies. I spent the last nineteen years in Afghanistan. Wow, that's uh, that's a really long deployment. Some of it was vacation time. If you're not calling about the grinders or or the DUI, I I'm at a bit of a loss, then, General. Uh, why exactly? Let me be frank, you... Mister. 
Mm -hmm. Wexler, I I'm not familiar with your program. I assume from the title that it is about automobiles. Yeah, um, not exactly. That's fine with me. Though they're used around the world, cars are extremely American. That's why we've spent billions to bail out the auto industry. They're like an apple pie you can ride in. Like baseball that'll take your family places. Uh, no, we, we, don't, we don't talk about cars. I'm sorry. And I'm not here to talk about cars or about the tiny explosions that power them, taking place every single second inside the engine. No, no one of my aides suggested I speak to you as it would be one of the better ways, perhaps, of getting our message out to your listeners. We've noticed no one has been paying attention to our messages on digital road signs, no matter what we put up there. Yeah, graffiti legend Ship Pie kept hacking the boards to say pithy things like, you're the product, or God save the peen, or bail out Big Banksy, so, so we mostly ignore them now. And I, I mean, who, who, who bothers to read them? Right, Will. We're realizing your town reads less than the American average as well, which frankly makes it more American overall. Well, as long as it's a contest, we might as well be winning. Mr. Wexler, please. I'm speaking. What? Look, okay, buddy. Uh, I, I don't know where you get off, but Look, this is Look, I assume my all your listeners are Antifa communists, insisting on carrying laser pointers and wielding leaf blowers, so I'm going to spell this out as clearly as I can. Stay away from the Shonies. Now listen here. That Shonies is off limits. I and the law don't care how curious you are or how tempting a mystery you think it might be. If you come crawling around the Shonies, my men have orders to fire on trespassers, and rest assured, you will be shot on sight. I don't care if you're the mayor. I don't care if you're Johnny Teenager with a mouthful of bubble gum looking for a secret place to bed your sweetheart after the under the sea dam. Whoa, hold on a second here. Did did you or have something to do with the the mayor's death? What? Right. No, that was uh that was a figure of speech. I, I apologize. I'm not super familiar with the local politics of your town, so uh please forgive that unfortunate turn of phrase I may have used. On behalf of the United States government, we are sorry for your loss. Uh, you you talked about your men. Uh, what branch of government are you with, sir? I'm not at liberty to say. I, can you say what you're doing or, or what's happening inside the Shonies? No, I, I cannot. That's a classified situation. Now, look here, Mr. Wexler. Can, can you give a timeline for when the Shonies will reopen its breakfast buffet? I, um, I would assume probably never. Never, sir. I'd say that's accurate. Uh, wh why is this information classified? National defense, Mr. Wexler. But I'm not here to answer questions. And why not? Well, what exactly are you keeping from us? <laughs> I see what you're doing here. I called in strictly, strictly to reiterate that Looky Loos or Peaky Pizza or Eyeing Evans will not be tolerated. This is the final warning that I will share. After I call in to repeat this on Good Morning Sunbuns, and then I suppose there's a couple of news programs I'm to speak on as well. And and the Gazette. But you get the picture. The Shonies and and the surrounding area that includes the Soaking Suds is dangerous. If for some reason you are not shot, there are other dangers that may cause a viewing victor or a sightseeing Scott to end up deceased. And obviously, none of us would like to see that happen. It's a dangerous place, so be a patriot and stay away from the Shonies. What's the slogan we've been using? If you see yellow tape, don't stop and gape. This area's closed today, so move away. That's, well, that's, uh, that's a terrible slogan. So here's a new one. Go to Shonies, get shot, or worse. I think that's clear enough for you civilians. Mr. Wexler, I thank you and your audience for your time. And God bless America. General. G General? He's gone. Um, all right. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll get some more information on this at some point, if not from the general, then by a, uh, a well-filed Freedom of Information Act. Um, I miss Shoney's. I miss those biscuits. I miss, man, that's, that's how I would wind down after a, a day doing night drive. Uh, go in, get a get a cup of decaf, because that's nighttime for me. I I sleep through the morning times. Man, that was a that was a weird call. Uh, we're talking about the DUI. If you're just tuning in, uh, not about the Shonies. 
uh, the DUI that happened on William Bryden Avenue. Give me a call, 305-209-9686. You're listening to Night Drive, and we're talking with this caller right here. How's it going, Horace? Uh, this is Oliver Brooks, longtime listener, second-time caller. Uh, good to hear from you again, Oliver. Uh, have you had a run-in with any of these uh, drunk scooties? When I was confiscating the mayor's leftover scud and taking back my weed whacker, you know, one of those maniacs, they came blowing by, and I got wrapped up in their oversized flag and those tassels hanging off the back, you know, and that caused me to drop all of my loot. You know, when they drove by, they were yelling something crazy, something about a time war and a painted-on robot butthole. Uh, That's depraved. That's crazy. I I hate it, and we simply can't allow it. Uh, What do you think we should do about this, Oliver? I don't know. I think we need to install breathalyzers. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. Uh, What do you think we should do about the Shoney situation and uh, the general? And we need to launch a formal investigation into the diner. Something yep. that doesn't yep. seem right. We need answers, but uh, who's going to give it to us? Well, well, have a good one. Bye. All right. Thanks for calling in, Oliver. Look, we're taking a lot of calls tonight, and I love it. But I know some of you out there are wanting to call in, desperately reaching for the phone, and then putting it back on the hook as you realize... You're just too shy to share your opinion with a stranger on the radio. Well, no worries at all. There's plenty of ways to be heard, even without opening your mouth. Uh, for example, the Poolish Nutter Milk tweeted at us at Night Drive FM to say, You think one is bad? I've seen these DUI scooties moving in packs descending on some of these bars like it was a dying antelope before terrifying the streets with their antics. Where is the law and order? Can we at least get a late night NCIS rerun to encourage some of them to go home for the programs? That's a, that's a great suggestion. Thanks for uh, tweeting at us, Poolish. Judy Blue Stofer fired up her Facebook and went to facebook.com slash nightdrivefm to say, Horace, this seems like a cut and dry case of boys will be boys, even if one of those boys is pushing 70 and can't move under his own power. The police are being too hard on them. This is just some low stakes hijinks, like throwing poppers at a kitty or building tennis ball bombs and hiding them in City Hall. Thanks for reaching out to us, Mrs. Blue Stover. Always good to hear from you. Uh, and finally, Choints Garish tagged at Night Drive FM Insta in a photo of him literally up to his neck in coffee beans with the caption, Want to team up? Hashtag my beans. Uh, I can only assume here he's standing in a. Uh, a vat of beans or there's uh, some sort of trick photography involved but um make me an offer joints no one grinds for free all right i want to hear more of your calls right now let's jump over here to line one line one i feel like we've been neglecting you line one go ahead i'll tell you something horace i feel neglected too i uh, do you uh who is this my name is royston bong donor a re- uh, well, you're, I don't know how you could feel neglected, sir. You're like the star of uh, the show this evening. You re- wait, really? I'm sorry. I haven't been listening. Do I, I feel I owe you an apology already. Off to the wrong foot. <laughs> right, I, Horace, my name is Royston Vong Donuts, and it's my pleasure. Hello. Ah, uh, well, we're, we're super excited to, to have you with us here on Night Drive this evening. Um, you were involved with a, a chase earlier tonight. Is it, isn't that right? Is that what they're calling it? A chase? What passes for a chase these days is sort of remarkable, but that's fine. I mean, it, it was slow, it, but it still counts, I think. Sure. I thought speed was a key factor in a chase. Was it not? I mean, for an exciting chase, maybe, but, uh, I've heard that, uh, they did chase you and, and you led them for... For quite a bit. Well, it felt like Thursday to me, Horace. So it was slightly more disappointing, but there you go. Right. This was all done. Can I, wait, let, can, I'm sorry to cut you off. Can I ask you something? Yeah, uh, please go ahead. What are they saying I ran into? Uh, well, they were saying uh, essentially that you hit a whole bunch of parked cars. Um, mm. you, you ran over a woman's uh, foot. Mm. I, I, I've heard that. Uh, you had your arms up with your shirt off and you were yelling your last name over and over. Bong Donor, yes, that's my last name. Right. I do remember doing that. Otherwise, I feel like you're describing a fairly victimless event. 
but uh, you did lead the cops on on a chase and uh, from what i understand they did have to use the pit maneuver on your scooter to get you to stop they did my and i'll tell you one thing my scooter has certainly it has been my trusted companion for many years now i don't i'm a man of years right if you must know and my scooter is how i go from town to well not town to town that would be ridiculous from spot to spot in our lovely Fakahashi, but to use the pit maneuver, did you see what they did to me? Did you see it? Boris? No, uh, we we were only listening through the police scanner, so uh, we didn't oh. we didn't see anything. We have a very one sided series of events uh, on our hands here. Well, like we're trying to piece you, it. To allow me to paint a picture for you, then Horace, you see, I was driving along on my scooter, coming mm-hmm. home from what I assure you was my own business. Right. And wouldn't you know, I hit, I just, clip. It was a clip. It was a kiss. It was a peck on the cheek of several parked cars. And suddenly, there's police officers and police men and, poli- and police women, mind you, chasing me. And and they, they, they took my place. That's why it was not high speed. I know I was not going very fast. I know the top speed of my scooter. I'm not a madman. But they kept my pace, and and wouldn't you know that just just suddenly, suddenly the front of the police cruiser just nudged the back of my scooter and sent me into a tailspin, throwing me from my very Zip Aru personal scooter. Right. You see, Horace? And there I found myself on the sidewalk watching... And, and and I can't tell you enough how how disheartening that was, particularly the chase, as you call it. Mm-hmm. The sheriff's deputy, what's his doofus? What a fool he was! Shouting, he was. Do you know what he was calling me the whole time? He was shouting, "Royston Dong Boner," right? Which I have to be, I have to make clear once and for all now, Horace. If I Horace, right? Are you listening? Yes. Is that? Do you think that everybody is listening? everybody uh, that is possibly awake and is tuned in yeah okay well that is not my name right my name is royston bong donor and that is why i had to take my shirt off and shout it at the top of my lungs at the sheriff's deputy asshole excuse me that mm-hmm. he's shouting dong boner what a silly name that is but anyway after i ended up sprawled on my ass on the on the pavement old old sheriff dick fuck couldn't get my goddamned that scooter. Zipparu, I tell you, they make good products, you know? Right. And it kept going. And I think part of what the sheriff's deputy was so upset with me about, calling me names, giving me what for, was that he had to murder my scooter in cold blood. He shot bullets into the scooter. I was on the sidewalk for a solid block and a half by the time he caught up with my scooter and gave it its final scoot. And I'll tell you, when those bullets hit that glorious battery, oh, the battery acid glowed bright in the air, and the explosion was indeed majestic, if not very far away from where I was. Because right. again, the scooter ran for some time before that sheriff's deputy fool head was able to, uh, to catch up with it and, and put it to an end. And that, frankly, is why I'm calling, because. Horace, and and mm-hmm. again, if you think everybody is listening, I'm currently in the market for some new transportation. So, if you are selling, uh, if you are Zipperu or have, uh, the Pride Travel Pro, or of course a a Gadabout, there they make good good wheels. Oh, I've seen the, I've seen the Gadabout, the 2020 Gadabout. Well, sure, uh, are, sure. Are beautiful. Well, the the guy about Florentine, that's some, that they're a little too pricey for me, but you know, guys got a dream. Right. Uh, it, it, Mr. Uh, Bong donor, can I, can I ask you a question? Um, how much had Horse you, can, Horace. Uh, how much had you had to drink, uh, this evening before this incident? Oh, was, can I answer that in relation to how much I normally drink? Uh, sure. How, however you'd like to, to answer that'll be fine. Well then the same. Were you celebrating anything, or is this just uh, like no. a normal evening for you? Uh, well, I, to be honest, I was celebrating the life of someone who is no longer with us. If I 
is upsetting to talk about, but right. there you go. The only reason I was drinking tonight was my ex-wife's other husband uh, died tragically earlier this week. He was Peruvian mm -hmm. from Peru, although I think there is a chance he was a catfish, I believe is what, what they're called. Right. Uh, I, I don't know that he was real, but here's what's bugging me, Horace. Let me ask you a question if I could turn these tables around. If the man is not real, but the pain that my ex-wife felt was real, does that, is he real? Oh, that's a, ooh, that's a you know? real metaphysical question there. Because I can almost guarantee you he was a fake Peruvian. Not that he was a man pretending, you know, of another nationality pretending to be Peruvian. I think he was a fake man altogether created by, I don't know, Facebook. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. My ex-wife sure seemed upset about it. So how real is too real, Horace? I'll tell you, I... I have some real things for my scooter that got murdered tonight by that sheriff deputy shitfucker. You know? Can I say that? No. No, no, you absolutely cannot. No? I, I, we're, we're having to beat this uh, every time. How many... Can I Can I ask, give or take ballpark number? How many words of mine have you fucking beat? I, I, we're up to probably five now. Five? Oh, right. that's not so bad. No, that's not, that's so, not bad. so bad. Uh, we did have to beat uh, both parts of uh, deputy Oh, understood. That one is that one is a little crude. But you see, when he murdered my scooter in cold blood, you know, did I tell you I named my scooter? I, I gave it a name. Oh, I uh, love that scooter. Uh, what was uh, got, what was the moniker got, that your scooter? I got by? personalized license plate frame and everything. It sucked my Richard. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, ribald. That's what the man at the kiosk said. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Bong Donor, uh, can I ask uh, where you were coming from before this uh, this incident transpired? I was well, yes, of course. I was coming from the country club. Mm -hmm. You know, the, it's it's one of the uh, one of the drinking establishments there on on Richard. Uh, on, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was thinking about my my scooter again. On William down Bryden. On William on William Bryden. Yes, yeah, it's, right. uh, it's the country club. It's the one down on the the end. That's the one that uh, um, you can throw peanuts on the on the floor, right? Yes, yes, it's exactly the sort of quaint drinking establishment that a man of my of my age and means quite prefers. I can tell you. Mm -hmm. You said that this was a, a normal amount of alcohol that that you had consumed uh, this evening. The same amount. Is yes, this the, the exact same? Amount. Is this the same amount that the servers at the country club generally give you? Uh, it is the place, the same place that I go to drink the same amount of alcohol. Yes. Right. Uh, it, would you say that they consistently overserve you or? Well, overserve is as though those are your words, I suppose. Who's, who else is, is it, who else, who told you? I'm sorry. Real, real quick. Sidebar. Who okay. told you to say that I was over overserved? I, I'm I'm just trying to like put the pieces together. Uh, nobody told me to say that you were overserved. Was it somebody in the T-ball walkers? No, I, I I haven't heard of the T-ball walkers. Those okay. Well, I can't say d but what can I say? Those uh, those ballyhoos over in the West Side T-ball walkers. You know, because they have the tennis balls on their walkers. Right. They call themselves the T-ball walkers. <sighs> They have been in on our turf for too long now. Got uh, and they're really, they really try to tell you that they're over-serving at the country club. Are they over-serving all the 8th Street Dust Kings or just me? You tell me what they said, Horace. They, they haven't talked to me. I, I wasn't aware of the T-Ball Walkers. Um, I had obviously heard of your um, gentleman's club, the 8th Street Dust Kings. Well, uh, of course, we're quite famous. I, I would say uh, maybe infamous. I'll take it. Can you tell us any more about the the T-ball walkers or, or why they might be spreading lies uh, about about you and potentially being overserved? Though, in fairness, sir, it really does look like you've been overserved. Oh, but I mean, here's the thing: How can I be overserved if it's the same as it was last week? That's the that's the question. How real can overserving be? If I don't believe it is real, it's the opposite thing of my ex-wife's Peruvian fake man. Do you see? Don't you understand how that works? Right. Right. 
But that's a that's a whole other situation that's keeping old Royston Bong donor up nights. But the, the other thing that keeps Royston Bong donor up nights is the West Side T Ball Walkers, and they're trying to move into the country club. And if they get all of us Eighth Street Dust Kings over served straight into some sort of sobriety nursing home, well, they can move right in there and get. You know why? Uh, no. Are you, please tell us. The country club is on a corner lot, and it's got a lot of room in the backyard for shuffleboard. Ah, there it is. That's the turf That's, that you're talking about. That is in the, the quite literal turf on which we play shuffleboard and lawn bowling. And of course, inside there are lots of puzzles. Mm-hmm. But, you know, mostly it's, it's, it's one of those bars that's kind of an old house, and it's got a backyard, and in that backyard bowls you know is yeah. what they used to call it got it uh, mother fuck what sorry sorry there i go it's my old war mouth that comes out when i'm drunk don't tell anybody i said that uh, it, uh mr bong donor um sir is is there anything else that uh you'd like to share with us before i let you go and uh move on with the show well uh, i suppose the only other thing i can tell you is that i actually knew william biden uh, he's, you knew William yeah, Brighton that the avenue is named after. Of course, his, uh, William Bright, Billy Brighton was his name. Only his mother called him William Brighton. He hated it. He would he would be rolling around in his his dungarees that that we buried him in if he knew that there was a whole street named after William Brighton, which was his mother's son, not Billy Brighton. Man, right. I knew him in the war. And I, before you ask, Vietnam. That was going to be my question. Do you know, I, I know it's like a, a, a bit of a mystery, uh, and uh, you were just talking about how uh, you buried him in his dungarees. Do you know how William Bryden died? Oh, of course. Of course. He, uh, he died doing what he loved, shuffleboard. Huh. I, I thought it would be more mysterious than that, uh, because they no, kept it out of the town heart, records. But Massive heart attack. Got it. Playing shuffleboard. Yes. Hmm. All right. Bit of an anticlimactic uh, answer, if you ask me. But, you know, every time I tell that story, it, it gets the same reaction, which is yours, which is just, huh, you know? Yeah. yeah but I, there you have it. I'm not, I'm not going to spread lies about the man. He was a dear friend. I thought for sure there would be something like spooky or mysterious, uh, it, just the way they kept it out of the history book. I, I mean, like, mm-hmm. it probably just because it wasn't interesting. They didn't include it. If, that's what I would guess. If honestly, if those that were writing the history book, they heard about a guy that died of a massive heart attack while playing shuffleboard at the country club with his war buddies. I don't think there's anything in particularly uh, interesting about that or worth a page in the history books. Right. But uh, you know, uh, Billy Bryden was a good man, even though his mother called him William. Yeah. Uh, well, Mr. Bong Donor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I, I... Mr. Bong Donor. Don't oh, did I say uh, did I say Mr. Dong Boner? I absolutely I didn't mean to. If I did, I, wait, wait, what did I say? I think you said Bong Donor. Did, did I well, say Dong correct. Boner? No, no, Bong Bong Donor. Bong Donor is correct. Okay, I think. Let's not worry about who said what. That sheriff f- stick. I'm sorry, I did it again. I'm so sorry. Is this live? Uh, it, it is. It is. Uh, That's embarrassing. Yeah, it's our producer has been for. been riding the button. Um, uh, for I'm, those of you familiar I'm, with the radio, I'm not familiar, but it sounds harrowing. <laughs> All right, Mr. Bong Donor, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you've definitely helped us put the the rest of the pieces together uh, for uh, what happened, uh, and uh, I I do think um, you should be uh, maybe pleased or uh, yeah, I would say pleased that uh, you were well, involved I'm, in a I'm, chase. Uh, I, I, I think it was have- a chase. I'm happy to put pieces back together for you now, or as if you could just go and have your listeners chip in a few bucks a piece to put the pieces the scooter back together, then I think we'll call it square. Right. Uh, that is why you called. Uh, are you doing any sort of GoFundMe, or do you, do you even know what GoFundMe is? You tell me. And I, I mean, you're the one that's got a producer on a button. I, is that how, is it a similar situation? We uh, can do this off air. If you like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take this off air. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll we'll take this off air, and uh, we're going to keep the show going. And uh, you can talk to him. But thank you so much for calling, and um, I hope you call back in the future uh, under uh, you know less uh, less spectacular circumstances. Ooh, where's the fun in that, Horace? But I love the show. Oh, thank you. I I, I didn't know that you would listen. So um, 
Uh, that's great. Well, I haven't, I haven't listened, but I love it so far. Right. <laughs> is it about? Is it about me every night? No, no. It, it, it ah. it's that is it, that is not usual. It is not usually it, about you. And I would be asking for quite a bit. You know what? I've taken up enough of your time, and I can tell you're trying to get me off the phone. That is going to do it for your calls and opinions tonight as we're shutting down the lines. And, you know, it's time to shuffle off into tomorrow. I know the bars haven't closed yet, so if you're still out there on the streets, please be careful. Uh, It wouldn't be the worst idea to throw on a reflective vest or, or a helmet or better yet, get inside immediately. Not even inside a building, just inside a car a uh, phone booth, uh, anywhere that will that'll put a sturdy set of walls around you uh, as the scooties take to the streets. If you enjoy the show, and if you're still listening, I can only assume you do, unless you've collapsed inches from the stop button from dehydration, uh, please consider subscribing and giving us five stars on iTunes and or follow us on Spotify. Uh, you can find new episodes of Night Drive and the Fakahatchee News every other Sunday to kick off the week. You can also reach the show on Twitter at Night Drive FM, on Instagram at Night Drive FM Insta, or at Facebook.com slash Night Drive FM. But if you really love the show, why not become one of our patrons and support the show at Patreon.com slash Night Drive. That gives you access to our Discord, where you can join all the other Night Drive fans. Uh, Plus, we post important info for callers who'd like to call into the show, and we do a running gift tournament. Uh... We're right in the semifinals right now, and it is getting heated. Also, recently, we did a collaboration with at T-Dog Art to create a very cool vapor wavy piece of Night Drive art, uh, which is going to be all over all sorts of merch and everything. Um, When you join the Patreon, you'll get a discount for that, and there will be a a bigger announcement coming about that uh, very, very soon. Um, Such, such cool art. Night Drive is produced by Michael Truly and is hosted with a side of breadsticks by me, Horace Wexler. The following callers were ably played in a zone defense by Clint Gage, CJ Meeks, and Ron Babcock. I'd also like to thank our lightning callers, Cass Stormer, Nathan Greenaway, and John Martinez, as well as extend a very special thank you to our musical guest punk band, Corporate Stooge. If you could take the trash can you set on fire with you when you leave, that would be swell. Good Morning Sun Buns with Tiffany Bunzel takes over tomorrow at 6 a.m. On tomorrow's show, Tiffany will dig into the dark world of human trafficking and tell you how to avoid coming across stories about it that might bum you out. She'll also be joined by a pair of twins that swear they couldn't be more different, especially when it comes to fashion, as well as meet someone who's made a house entirely out of kale. Until then... Here's four and a half hours of government-mandated buzzing we're blasting out over the airwaves. To jam them so other buzzes don't get lonely, who can say? Uh, maybe Lieutenant General Montauk, but he's uh, he's not Montauking. <laughs> don't worry, I, I'll show myself out. Until next time, I'm Horace Wexler. Keep night driving.